Hello and welcome. Once again, in the lecture series on the course Elements of Machine Design. In last several lectures, we have undergone through the chapter number one Fundamentals of Machine Design. From today onwards, we will start a new chapter that is chapter number six from the syllabus Selection of Anti Friction Bearings and gears. So, in today's first lecture, we will undergo through the fundamentals of bearing. What is meant by anti friction bearing? What is the role of bearings? What are the different types of the bearings? What are the different loads that acts on the bearings? classification of the bearings and their applications so let's start with the definition of a bearing what is meant by bearing bearing is nothing but a machine element which support another moving machine element so in simple language we can say that it is an element which is used for the supporting purpose for the another moving machine element visually it is known as the journal so keep in mind the term journal that it is a moving member in a bearing that is a journal now it permits a relative motion between the contact surfaces of the members while carrying the load. In simple language, when two contacting surfaces carries a load at that time, the bearing plays an important role. The role of the bearing is to support the member which carries the load, which is in rotating motion. At the same time, while supporting the another member, it has to play another role that is to reduce the friction. Because we know that when there is a relative motion between the contacting surfaces, a certain amount of power is wasted in overcoming frictional resistance. We know that when two surfaces are in contact with each other then there is a possibility of reduction of power means when two moving elements are in contact with each other there is a chances of power loss due to the friction between the two moving elements that is the two moving rubbing surfaces now if the rubbing surfaces are in direct contact as we have discussed in order to reduce this frictional resistance and wear in some cases to carry away the heat generated a layer of fluid known as lubricant may be provided now this is the another element that is another object what we can say which is used to reduce the frictional resistance between the two moving elements that is the lubricant the lubricant used to separate the journal and bearing now keep in mind a journal is a moving part and it between the fixed part and the moving part now take this example this is a fixed part and this is a moving part in between this fixed part and moving part these bearings are introduced these bar bearings are introduced to reduce the friction between the stationary part and moving part as well as between the two moving parts so in simple language we can say the function of a bearing is to reduce the friction between the two moving parts the result of this it helps in production of power transmission as well as it helps to reduce the wear between the two moving elements.
so this is the introduction about the bearings now let's move towards the classification of bearings how bearings are classified classified now depending upon the direction of load acting or direction of load to be supported as we have defined the bearing is nothing but an element which is used to reduce the friction between the two moving parts or to reduce the friction between the stationary and moving parts at the same time there is application of load on that stationary or moving part so depending upon the direction of that applied load the bearings are classified as radial bearings and thrust bearings now in case of radial bearings the load acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of the moving element now as we have defined that moving element is nothing but the journal so this is the moving element we have seen the direction this is the moving element and this is the shaft and this is the application of load so in radial bearings the load acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of moving element so in this figure this is a two d diagram so this is the application of load perpendicular to this this is the motion of moving element here we can see that these are the bearings this is the shaft so the load acts in this direction on this component this is the moving element which is moving so the thrust radial load acts along the direction of motion of the moving element this is the direction of application of load this is the direction of motion of element so perpendicular to the direction of motion of element if the load acts in that case we are using the radial bearings now in case of thrust bearings the load acts along the axis of rotation now in this case it is the perpendicular to the axis of rotation but in case of thrust bearing it acts along the axis of rotation so this is the difference between the radial bearings and thrust bearings depending in the, depending upon the direction of load to be supported next classification is depending upon the nature of contact means as we have to find the bearing has contact between the two moving elements say stationary element and journal so depending upon the nature of contact of that bearing with the stationary element and journal the bearings are classified as sliding contact bearings and rolling contact bearings now in case of sliding contact bearings the sliding takes place along the surface of the contact between the moving element and the fixed element this is the moving element and this is the fixed element now in this case the sliding takes place along the surface of contact as there is a slide contact sliding takes place between the stationary element and bearing that's why these are known as the sliding contact bearings and in case of rolling contact bearings as we have seen these are the rolling contact bearings this is the rolling contact because it is rolling along the moving element and the stationary element that's why it is known as the rolling contact bearings in rolling contact bearing the steel balls or rollers are interposed between the moving and fixed element now this is the fixed element this is the moving element and the rolling or balls or rollers are inserted in between the moving element and fixed element that's why these are known as the rolling contact bearings our main focus is on to study the rolling contact bearings our study is restricted to the applications of the rolling contact bearings and types of the rolling contact bearings so from this moment onwards we will discuss only the rolling contact bearings so this is the another classification of bearings the classification of bearing is very important we have to concentrate on the how the bearings are classified the first classification that we have seen is depending upon the direction of load to be supported second classification is depending upon the nature of contact between the bearing and the moving element
now rolling contact bearings as i have seen i have so, uh, told you that we have to focus on the rolling contact bearing so we will study in deep what is meant by the rolling contact bearings as we have defined in rolling contact bearing the contact between the bearing surface is rolling instead of sliding now these are the rollers that we have seen so the these are the rollers so depending upon the nature of contact between the rollers and the slide uh, stationary element that's why it is known as the rolling contact bearings we have already discussed that the ordinary sliding bearing starts from the rest with practically metal to metal contact and has a high coefficient of friction it is an outstanding advantage of the rolling contact bearing over a sliding contact bearing that it has a low starting friction due to this low friction offered by rolling contact bearing these are also called as the anti friction bearings means it reduces the friction significantly that's why we are using the rolling contact bearing for the many applications depending upon the nature of load acting on that element so this is the most important advantage of rolling contact bearing that it can reduce the friction between the stationary part and moving part considerably so advantage and disadvantage of the rolling contact bearing over the sliding contact bearing keep in mind in sliding contact bearing the contact between the stationary part and the moving part that is the journal is sliding that means there is a sliding motion of bearings between the stationary element and journal element but in case of the rolling contact bearing rollers or balls are inserted between the stationary element and moving element that is the journal once again i want to remind you that our study our focus is to study the rolling contact bearings in detail so first of all we will see what are the advantages of rolling contact bearings over the sliding contact bearing the first advantage is the low starting and running friction at very high speed as we have discussed that's why these are known as the anti friction bearings because the running friction offered by these bearings is very low at very high speed because we have already defined that when there is a contact between two moving elements when there is a rubbing action between the two moving elements as the speed goes on increasing this rubbing action also goes on increasing so it is very necessary to reduce this friction between the two station two moving elements so that the power can be transmitted easily and at considerable range so to avoid this friction at high speeds we are going for the rolling contact bearings this is the most important advantage of rolling contact bearing over the sliding contact bearing that it offers low starting and running friction at high speeds keep in mind next advantage is the ability to withstand shock loads momentary shock loads because as the rolling as the moving element will acquire the high speed it will get suspected with the shock loads there is a chances of experience of shock loads when and moving elements attain a certain speed so to absorb these shock loads the bearing element should be have certain properties the bearing should be able to absorb these shock loads then and then only it can fulfill its basic function so the second advantage is to withstand momentary shock loads next is the low cost of maintenance as no lubrication is required while in service this is the most foremost advantage of rolling contact bearing that it does not require any kind of lubrication as that is required in case of the sliding contact bearings so apart from the low starting torque sorry low starting friction next foremost advantage of rolling contact bearing that it has low cost of maintenance and no lubrication is required as it is required in the sliding contact bearings next is the small overall dimensions as we are using rollers 
and bonds in case of rolling contact bearing that's why it offers an advantage of overall small dimensions next is reliability of service means as an design engineer we can rely we can reliable on the service of rolling contact bearing that means it has more life it can sustain more number of cycles that's why we can say it is a reliable next advantage is the easy to mount and erect and last one is the cleanliness so apart from this advantage it offers some disadvantages also but the advantages offered by the rolling contact bearings are more or we can what we can say this advantage which are offered by the rolling contact bearings can be reduced can be neglected over the advantages of the rolling contact bearing that's why we are referring or we are going for the rolling contact bearing for different applications first disadvantage is the more noise at very high speed as we are using this rolling contact bearings for the high speed as there is a high speed there is a chances of more noise next is the low resistance to shock loading low resistance to shock loading but it has the good ability to withstand the shock loads momentary shock loads next is the more initial cost now maintenance cost is different and initial cost is different because it is having the high cost of the ball bearings that's why it is having the high initial cost but once you erect it once you mount it the maintenance cost of this bearing is very low and design of bearing housing is complicated as we have to insert as we have to mount as we have to erect this bearing inside the stationary element and the general bear general element so the design of bearing housing is complicated so these are the some disadvantages of the rolling contact bearing next now we will focus on the types of rolling contact bearings as i have said to you that we have to focus on the rolling contact bearings so we will see one one by one what are the different types of the rolling contact bearings the first is the first major type of rolling contact bearing is the radial ball bearings radial as the name suggests the load acts on these balls or rollers is the in the radial direction so as the diagram shows this is the ball bearing this is the radial ball bearing these are the retainers this is the ball bearing as we have seen in the diagram these are the ball bearings here these are the retainers this part is the retainer part this part is the retainer part this part is the retainer this is the white portion is the ball bearing this is the moving element and this is the stationary element this is the stationary element this is the moving element inner rays and outer rays and these are the retainers the ball bearings consist of an inner rays which is mounted on the shaft or journal this is the shaft or journal this is the inner rays which is mounted on the shaft or journal and outer rays which is carried by the housing or casing now this is the outer rays this portion is the outer rays which is carried by the housing this is the housing so it has inner rays and outer rays in between the inner and outer rays there are balls or rollers these are the balls or rollers in between the outer rays and inner rays a number of balls or rollers are used and these are held at proper distances by retainers these are the retainers which actually these are the retainers these are the retainers which actually held these bearings at proper distance or balls at proper distance so that they do not touch to each other the retainers are thin strips and is visually in two parts look at this this is one part and this is another part these are in two parts which are assembled after the balls have been properly spaced so the functions of retainers 
is to retain the ball at proper position so that the two balls or two rollers should not be in contact with each other at the time of the applications. So this is the in general construction of the radial bearings. Means in radial bearing there is a portion of inner race, there is a part of outer race, there is a part of retainers and there is a part of rollers or balls. This is the overall construction of the radial ball bearings. Now types of the radial ball bearings. What are the different types of the radial ball bearings? The first type is the single row deep groove ball bearing. Now single row means single row means it is having a single row of ball bearings. That's why it is known as the single row deep groove. Deep groove means the balls where it is inserted, it is having a deep groove. That's why it is known as the single row deep groove ball bearing. Now this is the outer race. This is the inner race. These are the retainers and this is the ball. What we have seen in the previous slide. This is the ball. This is the outer race. This is the inner race and these are the retainers. Here there will be a retainers. These are the retainers. The single row deep groove ball bearing is shown in diagram. During assembly of this bearing, the races are offset. Inner race and outer race are offset and the maximum number of balls are placed between these inner and outer races. The races are then centered and the balls are symmetrically located. These are the balls. These are the balls which are symmetrically located by the use of retainer. These are the retainers. The deep groove ball bearings are used the applications. The most important part is the applications of ball bearings. Keep in mind. These deep groove ball bearings are used due to their high load carrying capacity and suitability for high running speeds. Means these deep groove ball bearings are used where there is a necessity to sustain at high loads and when there is a high running speeds. Keep in mind a bearing is an element which is inserted, which is mounted which is incorporated in between the two moving elements or in between the stationary and moving element. So it will get subjected to the high running speeds. When there is a high running speeds and when we desire to sustain these bearings at high loads at that time we are going for the deep groove ball bearings, deep groove radial ball bearings. Keep in mind. The load carrying capacity of ball bearing is related to the size and number of the balls. So this is the about the single row deep groove ball bearing. Its construction, construction wise it has inner race, outer race but the inner race and outer race is offset and in between that balls are inserted. These are used for the where we desire to have a large load carrying capacity and when the speed of rotation is high. Now next type of radial ball bearing is again this is the upper race, this is the inner race, these are the retainers and these are the balls what we have seen upper race, inner race, these are the retainers and these are the balls. The only difference between the radial ball bearing and the filling notch bearing is the size of the retainers. A filling notch bearing as shown in figure, these bearings have notches in the inner and outer races. These are the notches. In the, these are the notches in the inner and outer races. In case of deep blue ball bearing, it is having a straight line. The notches are straight. But here it, has, it is having some notches. That's why it is known as the filling notch bearing. Now due to this, what is the advantage due to this inner and outer race? It permits more balls to be inserted that in a deep groove ball bearing. The notches do not extend to the bottom of the race raceway and therefore the balls inserted through the notches must be forced in position. Since this type of bearing contains large number of balls than a corresponding unnotched one, therefore it has a large bearing load capacity. Common sense. As 
it can consist of large number of ball bearings that's why it can have a large load carrying capacity a difference between the deep groove ball bearing and filling notch bearing is that in case of filling notch bearing the notches are provided on inner and outer side for the inner and outer recess that's why we can accommodate large number of ball bearings large number of balls inside the recess that's why it has the larger load carrying capacity as compared to the deep groove ball bearing so this is the difference between the filling notch bearing and the deep groove ball bearing again the application of filling notch bearing is where we require to sustain large number of loads where there is a possibility of exertion of large number of loads on the bearing at that time we can go for the filling notch bearing this is the second type of the radial ball bearing keep in mind we are looking at the classification of the radial ball bearing the third classification is the angular contact bearing again same construction is there upper race is there inner race is there two retainers are provided and these are the balls an angular contact bearing is shown in diagram these bearings have one side of the outer race cut away to permit the insertion of more balls than in deep groove ball bearing but without having a notch the only difference between the deep groove ball bearing and notch filling filling notch bearing and angular contact bearing is that in angular contact bearing also there is a notch in a outer race notch we can we can't say a notch but the outer race is a cut away to permit the insertion of more number of balls we have already seen in filling notch bearing is that there is also a accommodation of large number of bearings due to the notch provided in inner and outer race but in case of the angular contact bearing there is a no provision of notch but only a outer race is cut away but there is a no notch without having a notch cut into both races this permit the bearing to carry a large axial load in one direction while also carrying a relatively large radial load these are the two important loads one is the axial load and one is the radial load now axial load means the load which is acting along the axis of the shaft that is the axial load and the radial load is the load which acts along the radius along the periphery of the bearing along the periphery of the shaft is known as the radial loads so the angular contact bearing permits the large axial load the load which is acts along the axis of rotation of shaft that is the axial load while also carrying a relatively large radial load means the load which is acting perpendicular to the axis of shaft is the radial load and the load which acts along the axis of the shaft is the axial load so the applications the applications of the angular contact bearing the angular contact bearings are usually used in pairs so that thrust loads may be carried in either direction means in axial direction as well as in radial direction so the application of angular contact bearing is that these bearings are used where there is a requirement to carry the load in both direction that is in axial direction as well as radial direction keep in mind keep in mind when there is a requirement of to carry the load in both direction axial as well as the radial then we can go for the angular contact bearing the difference between the angular contact bearing and filling notch bearing is that there is a no notch provided in angular contact bearing but there is a, a race way is cut a race is cut away to permit the insertion of more number of balls inside the races so fourth bearing is the double row bearing a double row bearing is shown in diagram these bearings may be made with radial or angular contact between the balls and races the double row bearing is appreciably narrower than the two single row bearings the load capacity of such bearing is slightly less than twice that of a single row bearing 
as it has two rows that's why it is known as the double row bearing it is the same as the single row dip groove ball bearing only difference between the single row dip groove ball bearing and double row bearing is that in this case two rows of bearings are provided that's why it is known as the double row dip groove ball bearing but the disadvantage of this it has the less load carrying capacity than that of the single row dip groove ball bearing last one is the self aligning bearing same upper rest inner rest uh, retainers are provided and these are the balls a self aligning bearings is shown in diagram these bearings permit shaft deflections within 2 to 3 degrees look at this this is the center line of shaft this is the bearings this is the moving element and these are the bearing inserted when it get rotated and when there is a deflection of shaft from its center axis still these bearings can accommodate that deflection that's why it may be noted that the normal clearance in ball bearing are too small to accommodate any appreciable misalignment of shaft relative to the housing if the unit is assembled with shaft misalignment present then the bearings will be subjected to a load that may be in excess of the design value and premature failure may occur premature failure may occur that's why that means that if there is a 2 to 3 degree alignment while aligning a shaft due to this alignment there is a possibility of the excess load coming on the bearing so in this case if the self aligning bearings are provided that self aligning bearings can accommodate that excess load which is acting on that shaft so where there is a chances of deflection of shaft at that time we can go for the self aligning bearings so this is the types of the radial ball bearings first type is the rolling contact bearing in that we have seen radial ball bearings and again we have seen the types of the radial ball bearings that is the single row dip groove bearing filling notch bearing angular contact bearing double row bearing and self aligning bearing i hope you have understood what is meant by the rolling contact bearing and how these rolling contact bearings are classified thank you